I'm sure a lot of you have been hearing about or have, uh, have seen or heard President Park's renewed emphasis on unification since she came into the office, um, calling unification a jackpot or bonanza and so on. Now, admittedly, let me be the first one to point out that promoting unification between the two Koreas is no panacea in terms of uh, you know, solving all problems or even that US or South Korea necessarily have a lot of leverage to bring this about. Um, achieving this outcome, I mean, we don't have a lot of, a lot of, you know, of things that we can do. Um, and it, it could also take a long time to show results, right? And there are obviously clearly risks on the way. There are risks that's involved. Um, for example, risk of making North Korea mo even more belligerent if uh, by increasing its sense of existential threat by talking about unification. There are other pressing challenges, uh, particularly in, in an instability scenario leading to unification, and we should not underestimate them, um, from securing North Korea's nu loose nuclear weapons to averting the kind of chaos um, that, that gripped post uh, Gaddafi Libya. When I worked in the US government, I spent a couple of years really focused on um, looking at all the things that could go wrong in a unification scenario or an instability scenario, and there are many. So I don't want to underestimate those challenges, including massive potential humanitarian crisis like refugee flow. But even with such challenges, I think Washington's policy towards the Korean Peninsula can no longer be limited to just denuclearization. Um, what we need is a long-term, I know it's hard to think to ask from the government to actually have a long-term strategic vision and a strategy, but um, I do think you, we, we need to have, have a vision and a strategy and seeking an opportunity on the Korean Peninsula. And what I mean by that is, or the primary and most immediate focus has to be denuclearization and nuclear program and missiles and all that. We must now proactively support a broader um, strategy, namely to promote and pursue policies, right? actively pursue policy that in the long term will bring about unification of the Korean Peninsula and to, the, to the kind of unified Korea that we want to see, right? which is a democratic, pro, uh, free market, pro-Western state. Uh, there would be essentially a bigger version of South Korea. So what this means, obviously, is for Washington to launch a deliberate and intensive diplomatic effort uh, with eventually with interested regional powers to promote coordination and preparedness for all contingency scenarios. Um, but of course the process has to start with between US and South Korea to augment, and they, all, they do have military planning in place, um, but to augment this military plan with a coordinated political, economic, diplomatic, and legal strategy to really tackle all the core unification issues that's going to come about. And this bilateral discussion should be frank, um, and it should include really candid discussions about the structure and nature of US military presence uh, in Korea, future of the alliance, where is that going to go, uh, post-unification, and even outline a post-unification security structure. Let's not underestimate challenges, both present and even future challenges involved with unification. I don't, want to, I don't mean to underestimate that, but I just want to emphasize there are potentially many for benefits that's involved with a unified Korean state, not only for Korea and the Korean Peninsula, but for the region and for the United States as well, right? We don't even have to talk about incalculable security gains with what it means um, for the region when you, when you don't have the biggest uh, source of instability in the region, biggest uh, weapons proliferation uh, source uh, in the region, and economic, economically too, right? The region could benefit because unified Korea could be something like unified Germany um, and, and provide to be, prove to be a valuable partner to existing partners, uh, trade partners like China and the United States. And of course, needless to say, we don't talk enough about this, but creation of unified state will, will be a huge human rights boon for the region, right? And there's oftentimes, I think that's always human rights issues gets, get to be under the table. We don't talk about it enough because we're always so much focused on security concerns. But just think about freeing the 23, 24, 25 million North Koreans uh, from the grip of the last remaining Stalinist dictatorship. So that would be um, not only a big win for, I think, America's security interests, but our values as well. And I think my time is up, so we'll go for Q&A. Thank you.